I'm at a little bit of a loose end having just finished my last project. I thought what I really need to do is audit all my bows and work out um, you know what I can do with them. I've got unfinished experiments, repaired bows that aren't tested, all sorts. One of the first ones I dug out was this um, a sort of try out flight bow relatively short for an English longbow but made out of fairly scrappy yew you can see there's a lot of sapwood down on that limb I think it was sort of a prototype for Il Bastardo which was a, a flight bow of some viciousness but which performed rather well I've also got this massive laminated stave that one of the guys at the club made up that is just stupidly heavy but I thought well maybe I could tiller that into a stupidly long stupidly heavy war bow just to see how heavy we could go I've got a strip of wood cut out some exotic hardwood cut out of something I've even got a little um, slazinger bow the sort of thing people had in the 1950s, 60s, what have you you know, a little club bow or something, be interesting just to have a little, put a string on it and see what it actually does. Uh, it's probably lemon wood, I think, by the look of it. Yeah, I guess that's lemon wood. That big old bow. I haven't shot that for ages. I used to rove with that quite a bit. That's quite interesting. I've got one of those steel apples and pollock bows but they're regarded as unsafe to shoot due to corrosion in the middle of the steel tubes. I did actually make a string and drew it on the tiller so it's a bit of a novelty. Uh, what else? Certainly in terms of untested bows I was looking for the little flight, well there's the Osage flight bow which has got a repaired tip at the other end which I haven't drawn since I stuck a flight arrow into the belly of it and it exploded I'd overdrawn slightly so that needs retesting and the one, ah there we are that's what I was looking for this flight bow that had loads of different ends spliced onto it and lord knows what hadn't been taken back to full draw since then so I'll get that on the tiller and I'll draw it up. I'll do a little compilation of odds and ends. There's the hinged bow there which is quite fun. Tiny little elm bow that I made years ago. All sorts of stuff. And of course there's Emily Cat. Do you want to go out the front puss? Yes, 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 yes. I don't want to go out now. I'm just having a peek, see what's going on. Right, first up is a much repaired flight bow that I was experimenting on adding lighter levers that had broken and been re-spliced and Lord knows what you can see the lever on each end is a different colour well, let's just see where it's got itself to Right, 50 at 23, let's just take it to 24, that would be a, a usable draw length I think for flight. Probably 27, but let's just see. Yeah, battery in the camera died, I've got a dodgy battery charge, it doesn't help. Uh, my flight arrows seem to be on length, so it's 19 inch ones, which would have been for the H bow, and I've got some 26 inch, and then some 30 and so on. So, if it will pull 26 at this low brace, uh, perhaps it will pull 26 at a slightly higher brace, it will be worth trying, but it may go bang. Wow, 
Woohoo! Well that looks very encouraging. I think that was 26 and it's leading 60 pound, which is manageable. Uh, safety glasses may be advisable, but that's that's one experiment that's been had been put to one side, it's been revitalised. That's worth a try. This one's my Osage flight bow that shot me furthest, which was 341 yards. The tip snapped off when I stuck an arrow into the belly. I thought I'd replaced it with a, an elm tip, but obviously I replaced it with elm and then overlaid horn back on it again, so it's got a sliver of elm. You see, I've got it at a low grade, so I want to exercise it. I don't want to just heave it back. So I have had an Osage bow explode on me once when I hadn't, um, hadn't been shot for ages and uh, someone wanted to borrow a bow and I thought oh, I'll just test that see what it's like and I got to 28 inch draw it just went bang you notice I'm just readjusting where it's being pulled that left limb's looking a bit weak so I think this is something like 80 pounds. Yeah, about 65 at 24. Well that'll do, I mean I haven't um I probably want to go to 26. I should do really, shouldn't I? It's just a bit nervy because this is a for me it's a record bow. And it's Osage it was given to me in the States when I went over there. So I don't really want to smash it. see that little dot there that's where the arrow stuck in the belly and um, as I loosed there was an almighty bang the arrow turned into matchwood and the knock came off and the string came off so I've done a repair there anyhow there we go right number three this is spliced U. We can see there's an awful lot of sapwood that end, and there's a bit of a dip there, uh, and it's still got vast marks on it. This was a try out for a flight bow to sort of get an idea of proportions. It's at a decent brace, so I need to keep an eye on that limb if that's going to fail, or is the splice going to fail because the glue's now rather old twenty six at sixty five so it's probably still got a bit of life in it yeah it's hard work <laughs> jeez not as fit as I was but as you look down it hopefully you can see the sort of deflex in that um, in this limb here let's put it that way Bit of deflex in it and finally for this video the little slazinger sort of bow that was sold back in the day I think on it it said something like 18 pounds or something yeah it's pretty right about 18 pound at 28 inches so it's a nice little kids bow for um, grandkids nieces nephews random people cats all sorts it does what it says on the tin see there it says 18 pounds, then it says 18 pounds, then 50 and 28. I don't know what the 50 means. 